Uh, hi, we are live. It just binged. Hi, everybody watching. This is um Jen here this week, and I've got a really cool, awesome, fun guest, Tony Hammer. Hi, Tony. Hi. Tony and I just realized we're in completely different time zones and didn't account for that. Where are you? <laughs> uh, I'm in Portland, Oregon. Right. Okay. So, Tony graciously um came to my time zone, basically. So, <laughs> anyhow, um, first I want to tell everybody that Tony and I met because of a really cool project that's going on right now. Um, if you are a mom that goes on the internet at all, hopefully you have heard of ScaryMommy.com, which is a great website run by Jill Smokler, and she does a project every year called Scary Mommy's Thanksgiving Project, where she raises money to help families that don't have money for Thanksgiving give their families a Thanksgiving. And um, okay. yeah, this year uh, it's uh, how many families? I wrote it down somewhere. 2,152 families get to have Thanksgiving dinner because of this. Yay. And um, we are both, Tony and I, contributors to an ebook, and it's called Scary Mommy's Guide to the Ho Surviving the Holidays. I'll put the link in the description. But it's a book of funny, irreverent essays about surviving this crazy time, and the proceeds go to the Thanksgiving project. So that's it. Check that out. Um, yes. Totally. But I thought it would be so interesting to talk to you, Tony, because um, you've been, you call yourself the mom who never wanted the job, but you, you have it big time now from what I understand. <laughs> yeah, um, I have two toddlers. Um, my kids were born 355 days apart. So in less than a year, I went from someone who never wanted the job to having a very big family all of a sudden in a very short amount of time. <laughs> yeah. So that's so interesting to me because people seem to come at motherhood from all different areas, but we don't usually, in the whole mommy blogger, YouTuber sphere, nobody really talks about the, the way you came to motherhood, which is not intending it to be your primary um, career, which is what I guess it becomes yeah. <laughs> over your whole life. So I, I know you've gotten a little bit of flack on the internet for talking about that, but I just want to say I think it's awesome and honest, and thank you. Oh, thank you for saying that. Yeah, it's um, it's funny because I I came up with the idea, is it bedtime yet, stories from a mom who never wanted the job because um, I'm writing a book right now, and that was a funny name, and I never even thought that it would be received as a negative or as awful as like, some people perceive it to be. Um, and it's just so great that I've had so many women write me and email me and say, thank you so much for saying what you say, and I thought it was the only one, and um, you make me feel hopeful that I can be a good mom too, since you never planned on it and you're doing it. And so it's been a crazy whirlwind because, like I said, I never thought it was a big deal to name myself that, and yeah. evidently it is. So. Well, yeah. Um, I was wondering, though, so since you obviously, we all think about parenthood before becoming a parent, and we have like a preconceived notion of what it will be, and whatever idea that you had about what it would be, I was wondering if it's very different, or, or did it turn out to be what you thought? You know, I think what actually not planning on having kids was a benefit to me um, because I didn't really have any preconceived notions about rainbows and butterflies and um, so it, it kind of worked to my advantage because anything new that happened or happens now then I'm just like oh that's just how it must be and that's what babies are like and that's what toddlers are like and so because I never read books I didn't read mommy blogs because I wasn't planning on it and it just kind of happened so it really works to my advantage because I don't know what normal is or what I should be doing right. I, I think it's a funny way to say it might be it's kind of if you go into anything with lower expectations yeah. <laughs> it <seems> so bad. <laughs> That's it. yeah I had zero expectations so I brought home a baby and I'm like guess I'm doing this now yeah I think even people who plan to have babies their whole life, you see, since you never can really be prepared, that that's sort of what gets you through it at some point where you're like, 
I am doing it. There's no choice at this point. It's, <laughs> you just got to keep pushing. Exactly. Um, exactly. You got to get. Yeah. I definitely wanted to have kids, but I waited until I was in my 30s. Um, and then it wasn't an easy road. It took took a little while. I had a pretty devastating loss in there and I had some struggles. So for me, um, you know when you have those moments, <laughs> I had one today, My, you know, where like everything is going wrong, where you feel like you completely suck at this entire situation and right. you're just like, what, what have I done? And <laughs> um, you know, how, how am I going to continue to do this and do it well? The way that I always tend to get through those moments is like I, you know, I play a mental trick on myself and I think about if I could go back and tell myself, you know, years before when I was really struggling, when I was really feeling so sad and devastated that I was trying to have a baby and then I wasn't, that I couldn't. Once I like think about back to then, anything that's going on now, I'm kind of better able to deal with it because I, I'm like, oh, I realize how much I wanted this. And I love my son so much. So that's a, a long way of asking you this question. Since you don't have that tactic, <laughs> how do you deal with the moments when you're like, what have I done? <laughs> uh, how do I deal with those moments? Um, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more coffee is, is always good. Yeah. Um, I remind myself that my track record for keeping my kids alive and them going to bed at night so far is 100%. Nice. Um, and that every day so far I've been successful, and so on those bad days, I'm probably going to be successful too. And I just have to remind myself I've been doing this for two and a half years now, and so far my kids still wake up and say that they love me um, yeah. and they want to be around me. And so, just, and also reminding myself that I'm not the only mom who's going through those moments. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're all, we all have those days, I, actually I just had a post go up on Scary Mommy last week about it, that we all just have those bad days, um, and we're not alone, and just remind myself that, that all moms across the world are going through these bad days, um, and there's camaraderie in that, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been really cool to find that camaraderie. Um, yes. I, I think uh, sometimes... The, the stuff, when you first like delve into the whole mommy blog world on the internet, at least for me, it just made me feel shitty because it was more <laughs> about the rainbows and all of the beautiful birthday parties that I will never throw and right. all of that. But once you get past that and you find people like you and you find scary mommy and, and some other stuff, it's like, okay, I'm still me, I'm still a person, I'm, yet I'm also a mom and it's challenging and it's okay because it's hilarious. Exactly, um, and it is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, the, the things that happen are pretty crazy. Yeah, um, gosh, I'm trying. To, you're there's so many questions I have. I don't want to ask you any personal questions about how this came to happen in your life. Um, but having two so close together, I can't really imagine because it's so it's hard for me having one. Do you, do you think in any way that it's easier having two close together, or is it just really, really, really challenging? Um, I don't know any different, which I think helps. You know what I mean? This is just the hand that was dealt to me. So again, I don't, I don't have any preconceived ideas or expectations of what it would be like otherwise. Um, it, I think it's actually easier for me um, because my kids... When my son was born, then my daughter was still, um, she was a year old, and so she was still kind of a baby, and so she um, she grew up just knowing how to be gentle with him, and he's always been around for the most part. And so the best thing is that because they were born so close, they're best friends. I mean, they run around together and play together, and my daughter tries to get my son to dance with her, and... So it's actually really nice because they'll never know life without each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're always going to have each other and be best friends. Um, and the fact that they get to play together means that I don't have to play with them all the time, which is always a benefit. Yeah, totally. My son is forced, and he keeps um, he keeps saying, like, I need a baby, meaning a brother or a sister. I need <laughs> someone to play with. I totally get that. Um, yeah, do you have siblings yourself? Yeah, um, I have um, three older siblings um, from my 
uh, mom's first marriage, um, and they're all about 18, 20 years older than me. And I have a twin sister. Um, yeah. Cause so, because I, I almost think your kids are so close, it's almost in a slight way like they're twins. So, see, here, here here's the thing, and I've talked to my mom about this: is that having twins would almost be easier um, because they're going through the same developmental things at the same time. Uh -huh. um, whereas with my kids, then you know, once a kid hits two, all of a sudden their world opens and they want to do all these things and they can do all these things. And my son is a year younger, so he wants to, but he's not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely a challenge, and not to say that I would ever want twins, because my mother has told me stories, and that just doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we always do a giveaway every week, and I almost forgot that we have one. So just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we have this. This is a freezable lunch pack. Like it folds up to this tiny size. You throw this in your freezer. The whole thing freezes. And then it turns into a lunch bag, voila, like this. So wow. if anybody wants to win this, make sure that you visit the link in the description of this video or leave us a comment. Um, and make sure also that you visit Tony's website, TonyHammer.com. Uh, what else? And we want to make sure everybody goes and checks out Scary Mommy's Guide to Surviving the Holidays. There's a really funny trailer that just went up, I think, today. Did you see it? Did you see that trailer that Jill put out? It's like um, a video. I watched I, it like three times. Yeah, okay, yeah. I love, they have the voiceover. It sounds like the actual dude, the movie voiceover dude, you know. In uh -huh. a world where blah, blah, blah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a really funny video. The, the only thing that I could, I think I can identify with the entire thing except the moms looked too good. I was like. I know. <laughs> they were way wait. too well put together. They have hair and makeup, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I'm lucky if I get a shower, so anyhow. Right, yeah. Cool. Well, it's been awesome to talk to you. I think we're about finished our time for, for today, and, and it's, it's really crazy that we made this work somehow with our time zone misunderstandings and computer troubles and vomiting kids, but somehow it did. <laughs> well, it was great to be here. Cool. I, I love your blog. It's so funny. I hope everybody will go read it. Again, it's TonyHammer.com. Cool. And um, enter our giveaway in the link. Yay. Yay. I hope to meet you in person sometime. Me too, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.